Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're gonna go through all of my favorite products from 2019. If you've been to my channel for a bit, you'll know that I only do favorites videos like every other month or every three months because I want these products to be tried and true, actual tested favorites. I went back and forth on whether I wanted to do a November and December favorites or if I just wanted to do a year roundup. And I went back and I rewatched all of my favorites videos from this year and I thought about what products I was really reaching for, what I rebought, what I used the most. And I thought, yeah, let's make this a roundup video. So most of these are from previous favorites videos, but they are products that even beyond whatever favorite video they were in, I continued using them. Some of them I've bought multiple times, several of them I have panned completely and then bought again. So I went through my collection, I have all the products in this Sephora bag that would fit in there, and we're just gonna go through all the products. So I have 11 products here, and I have to mention they're not all makeup, most of them are, but not all of them are. But they are, they do all fall into like the beauty category. So there's 11 products, let's go ahead and jump straight in with like the primer that blew up <laughs> everywhere, and that I've panned completely. I bought multiple backups of. This is from e.l.f. and this is the Poreless Putty Primer. This is a brand new one I still have in my backup drawer. I have one right now, which is my second full one that I hit the bottom of in my collection, and that's currently in my everyday makeup basket being used. I really love this primer. I did a video comparing this side by side with the Tatcha primer, and it beat the Tatcha primer. Yeah, I think I, it's safe to say that this is my favorite primer of 2019. It is affordable. Now you can actually buy it because back when it first came out, it like blew up and so you couldn't find this anywhere. It was like sold out everywhere. Now you can find it. It's affordable. It's such a good primer. It works well underneath all types of foundations that I've tried on my skin. It really blurs the pores and it helps my makeup last longer throughout all the seasons. I use this in the winter. I use this in the summer. I use this in the fall. It works through all seasons. The next product I'm going to be talking about is a foundation that I found uh, that actually duped one of my favorite luxury foundations. And if you missed that video, I'll throw it up in the cards. This is from Wet n Wild, and this is the Pump Makeup Locker 3-in-1 BB Cream. I still have two left because I purchased a few of them to see if I could find my closest shade match, which I need to retry them out now because I've gotten noticeably paler. And I'm not quite sure what shade I would be right now, but currently I have the shade light, which I think is my closest, but if not, I think there's one lighter shade than this. If you want to see the full details on this, make sure you check out that other video, but this is such a good light coverage BB cream, like it says. And the three in one refers to the fact that in the cap you can pop this open and you have a color corrector and a um, like cream highlighter in here. So this is supposed to be like a makeup that you would bring like to the gym or something. When I work out, which I don't that often anymore, I need to get on that, but when I did, I just went barefaced. I didn't wear any makeup, um, but theoretically this whole line from makeup uh, from Wet n Wild, the makeup locker or the pump makeup line it's supposed to be used when make like when working out. I don't know how I feel about that, but this is a really good, just light coverage, comfortable. It's like the only way I can say that this like I can explain it is that it works just like that Shonda Kai BB cream foundation that I loved, and that was so much more expensive than this. Um, I really hope this isn't limited edition. I think that's probably also why I bought a couple of them, because I don't know, because I think this whole line was a collab with a YouTuber, so I don't know if they're going to make this permanent, but I've seen a lot of things that were limited edition from Wet n Wild that are still available on their website, so fingers crossed, but if you're looking for a nice, light coverage, comfortable BB cream, this one. Next we have a concealer that I used constantly throughout the summer because it really is the only concealer that holds up through the amount that I sweat in my crazy commute to and from work and how disgustingly hot it gets. I put it away the minute it got colder outside because I was kind of I don't know sick of reaching for the same concealer over and over when I have so many but that doesn't detract away from the fact that this is an amazing concealer. This is the Maybelline Instant Age eraser. Instant Age Rewind eraser. I cannot read this morning. This is an awesome concealer. I've gone through at least, throughout my entire, I guess, makeup lifetime, I've gone through at least four or five of them. I think this year I went through two full sizes, and then this one is what I was working on when I decided to put it away. It's affordable. I think it's got a pretty good shade range now. They did do an extension, I think, last year, so there are more shades available. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is the sponge that's up on the top because it's, I feel like it would 
move and tear away the foundation that I had because I always do full foundation sometimes a color corrector and then I put this on and especially if I had a color corrector on the sponge would just take that away so I just like taking off the sponge and I apply it just with a concealer brush and it's full coverage it stays in place it doesn't sweat off it's not disgusting and like I said it was literally my go-to for the whole summer so I know most of this is like drugstore, which I really appreciate. It's nice to find a good affordable product that you can actually like really use. Um, but the next product um, is more of a line that I was really reaching for a lot, um, except for like one shade. Um, and this is just the Lip Stunna line from Fenty. I was constantly reaching for this light nude shade, which is uncuffed, I think. No, this is unbuttoned. Also the brighter shades, like the pink and the like coral, which are unattached and unlocked are really good. The red, of course, that was the winner of my best and worst of red lipsticks video. If you missed that, I'll throw that up in the cards. That one's in a drawer, but I think these four were like some of my go-to shades for this entire year, especially this light nude. I think towards the beginning of the year, I was like wearing this every day just because it's like a good perfect color it's comfortable it's easy to throw on and matches just about everything it's like one of my perfect go-to nude shades i mentioned just the one shade uh in my first best and worst of black lipsticks video i talked about how the fenty black lipstick was my favorite that one looked decent in person but i noticed on camera it looked horrible and ever since then i've been experimenting with more black lipsticks and i found an ultimate favorite it looks good in person looks good on camera and just stole my breath away and that's the next favorite that i have and this is the black lipstick from uh, black moon cosmetics the actual shade is sleepwalker but this is such a good black lipstick it won my volume two and just mm, i love everything about this black lipstick and i'm glad i was able to find it i got this because of a recommendation from one of you lovely guys so thank you to everyone who has really enjoyed that series that i'm doing and gave me recommendations for lipsticks to try out because I'm excited to do a volume two of the red lipstick video and I'm excited to think about some other colors I could be doing this with too. All right, this next product I had to pull out of my everyday makeup basket because I'm still using it. It's been my go-to brow gel for the majority of this year, I believe. I rediscovered it because I put it away into my collection and came back to it. This is the NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel. It's the closest dupe I can find to the ABH Clear Brow Gel. And when I'm looking for a clear brow gel, what I'm looking for is strong, almost crunchy hold because I have a lot of hair. My hair is curly. And I've noticed that if my eyebrows get long, they actually curl on the ends. And it's thick hair too. So I need something to hold them in place like, grr get it right this is the close this is the best thing i found it's like six dollars a bottle the only thing that is i have a little bit of a problem with is how big the spoolie is but i can work around that the formula is just amazing it holds still all day it doesn't move my product around no matter if i wear eyeshadow brow pomade no matter what product i'm wearing if i put this on top of it it is staying in place so go to eyebrow gel so I was going to mention some Shop Miss A products in here because I have found a few of like my favorite go-to products, but I repurchased them and they have not come in yet. So I'm going to save those products for my follow-up to like my PR haul just to show you like what I actually repurchased with my own money. But that's not to say that the Shop Miss A products are not good because I do have some of my absolute all-time favorites. I just wanted to have the actual products here to show you, but they're not here yet because I bought them on Black Friday, so I know they had a lot to ship out. Um, but just keep an eye out for that upcoming Shop Miss A video because I will give you the full breakdown of everything. The next favorite kind of surprised me, but I was really glad that this year while I was working on my Pan That palette, I pushed myself to reach more for like single shimmery shades because I'm horrible at reaching for single shadows. And since my shimmers in my palette went fairly quickly I needed to reach out and bring in some more shimmers because you can do all matte looks I'm not a fan of all matte looks so I needed to bring in something and my favorite new favorite color pop shade is this super shock shadow in frog so this is the closest I guess dupe I could find for sailor which sailor isn't actually discontinued I found it at Ulta thanks to one of you guys you showed me that it was at Ulta still I didn't want to repurchase it because I still have this entire thing of frog left it's a beautiful shade though let me just do a quick swatch it's just a nice pale kind of pink nudie shimmer 
It looks great with a lot of different looks. I can do different dark looks and this, if you just use your finger and like tap it out, I'm not wearing it today, but if you use your finger and tap it out, it really makes a lot of like dark grungy looks a lot more wearable. I used this in a few of my Pan That Palette like tutorials when I was showing you two looks with my updates. So I'll throw the whole playlist of my Pan That Palette up and make sure you keep an eye on that because my finale is gonna come very soon. All right, we have two more products left and they're both non-makeup products. The first one is a hair care product and this is from Lush. This is the RMB hair moisturizer. I have like the jumbo size here. And how much do I have left? Mm, I use this to deep condition. So yeah, I think I've gotten a few deep conditioners out of this. The only downside I have for this is that it's expensive, but it's so good. It smells amazing. It really deeply moisturizes my hair. I can't get enough of it. Like this is a high-end product, high-end, well, price-wise it is high-end, that I can see myself repurchasing over and over because I love the way that it just works with my hair. You don't have to use it the deep condition, that's just my favorite way to use it. Um, you can use it just as a styler. Um, it is a bit heavy though, so I wouldn't use it like up here to style, I'd use it more like on your ends. And it really hydrates, really moisturizes, and it's just, it also smells amazing. It smells, uh, da 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 avocado butter and jasmine and last but not least we have a nail polish line in particular uh, two nail polishes that i've been wearing almost non-stop for at least half of this year and that's hollow taco yeah um i used to suck at doing my nails <laughs> yeah and i used to i would practice i would try to give myself more manicures but i used to last year try to go out more often to get my nails actually done but I really wanted to do them at home, but I was really bad at painting my nails. I always got outside the lines and blah, 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 and they never looked great, and I kept breaking my nails. Since I've gotten Hollow Taco, I think it has to do with, like, the applicator, like, the brush itself. It makes it so easy to put the polish on, and the black polish in particular. I love black and white nail polish. I'm waiting for them to come out with a white polish. I hope so. But black polish, it's just so easy to put on, and it literally is one coat black so it's super easy to put on it's super opaque you only have to do one coat and then you have a bunch of sparkly stuff you can put on top of it which i mean you can go back to my videos this year i'm like constantly wearing this nail polish my favorite top coat which you can actually already see a little bit of a dip in this is the flaky hollow taco i'm not wearing it today i'm actually wearing one of the holiday nail polishes that came out on top of the one coat black but oh, this has been my go-to and you can actually see the dip in the polish. I love this. It's made me just love doing my nails. I love taking the time like on a Sunday night to sit down, take off my polish, give myself a good manicure, scrub my hands, and then put on a new coat and it looks really nice and I get compliments on my nails and I just love the way my nails look and feel and they've been able to grow out. I love these nail polishes and I will continue to buy them. Well, I don't need to buy any because I have a lot of them, but like it stands. I also purchased their base coat that I've been using. I have all of the super glossy top coats I've also been using. And I did purchase two of the, um, the holiday colors. I got the silver and the rose gold, which is what I'm wearing today. And then I purchased some of them for my little cousin for Christmas because she also loves nail polish. So I'm hoping she likes it as much as I do. All right, so those are all of my favorites for 2019. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what your favorite products of 2019 have been. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.